What's up everyone, it's Matt Mrozik, and I haven't done a video in a very long time, and I've had a lot of people asking me, where are your videos? <laughs> well, I'm in one of those state of flux or points in projects where I just have to work and paint, but I did get several requests up, in particular on the flash I just posted. Some guys were wanting to see some un unedited photos, um, and I'm like, all my photos, the only editing, I really don't do any editing. The only thing I do to my photos when I upload them, I am a photographer, that's my profession. Um, I shoot digital, just like 99% of everyone else does. But digital photography has two inherent qualities that just comes with the territory. The first one is that it's out of focus. Right out of the gate, digital photography is soft. And to go into more technical details about that, um, the reason that is, is back in the film days, film, let's pretend that my two hands is, is a piece of film. It's, you know, it's got thickness to it. Well, lenses were designed to focus uh, light on a thicker piece of material. So you have um, the light that comes into the lens, through the lens, and hits that film. They all focus at different points in space. As minuscule as they are, they focus at different points in space. And film was designed to have those different wavelengths of light focus at those different points in space on the film. So you had uh, different color layers that were specifically designed to be focused at different points in space. Digital, on the other hand, is a completely flat surface. There's no thickness to it. So therefore, when all the light comes into your digital camera through the lens, all those points of lights, all those points of light or types of light are focusing at different points in space. Therefore, they all don't focus on the same plane, if that makes sense. Therefore, out of, out of the gate, they're out of focus. Now, digital lenses these days kind of help compensate for that. All my lenses, the lenses I currently own, aren't specifically designed for digital. I bought them back when I shot film. Um, I just haven't bought new digital lenses because you can fix that in sharpening in Photoshop or in post-processing. So the only... I don't want to say editing, but what I do when I do process my photos, I shoot a raw format out of my and out of my camera. That's a 50 meg file, um, and my camera is 10 years old, so it's 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 due for an upgrade. So the only um, thing I do to my photos is I do um, a contrast adjustment. I add some sharpening. I'll add a little bit of vibrance. Um, it's it's not really saturation. Saturation will really pump up the intensity of the colors. I do a vibrance. It's kind of hard to explain. It's kind of like adding saturation, but it's not as intense. Um, again, I have to go into really some technical terminology. Um, but what it does, it just kind of pumps the colors just a little bit. Um, I also go in and I, when I'm specifically in a piece like this, where I have this really dark red, I have a really you know you know light to mid tone skid tone, and I have this white circle. I have to. Um, Unless I want to spend hours lighting this thing, which I don't want to. I spend three to four hours photographing each piece as it is, and I do a general lighting. So what I do is in the processing, I go through and I basically reduce the highlights. And what that does is it brings the tone skin, the skin tone value down, and like this white down. Because if I just exposed it for the red, everything else would be way out, would be way overexposed. So there is some adjustment I have to do in processing for the images to look like what this does in person. So. This is what it looks like in person. And you can tell it looks a little flat right now on camera. Um, but, so anyway, this is what I guess the unedited version would look like. But uh, my photos are very accurate to what it looks like in person. So, um, just a quick kind of spin around on this piece. Again, this is the uh, quarter scale flash by Zion Art. Um, Zion Art puts out a pretty good product. A lot of guys know them as like kind of the, um, I don't want to say the lower quality, but they're less expensive than other producers. Um, this to me again I've only been doing the statues for about 18 months or so and to me this is probably one of the best flashes out there it's just really simple it's got a simple base it's a relatively small footprint but the pose is so dynamic you get a ton of sense of motion in this piece like he's really tearing down the street um, hold on one second I gotta pause sorry my kids are making a ton of noise in the background so a little bit about this paint uh, paint job um, the paint was relatively quick. It only took me about two days to paint them. <coughs> the prep was actually a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, I'll throw uh, the link down to the review of the kit that when I first got this last year at some point. Um, the base is solid. The base weighs a ton. I'm not sure what it weighs. It's got to weigh 10, 15 pounds alone. Um, it does have a metal rod going up to the leg, so I have no worries of this like leaning ever. 
Um, as far as the paint goes, um, when I posted this, I, I, I said, hey, I'm going to paint this. Anyone want to buy it? It sold like in five minutes. And my client basically let me do what I wanted. Um, so I stuck with, he, the only, the, there were two requests he had was a certain type of gold, which was uh, to me a titanium gold, which this is uh, acrylic or um, Vallejo metal colors, just gold, which is very similar to, to, to me a uh, titanium gold. And he wanted a um, pearl white on the chest. So like in the photos, the pearl doesn't show up really at all because it gets blown out. Again, this is a very high contrast image. I got dark red and I got white. So again, without Photoshop work or going in there and specifically lighting for the chest and compositing images, you know, like I said, I spent three or four hours photographing each piece as it is. So I just kind of do a general lighting on everything. And then I do my, uh, my basic processing or editing as people are calling it. Um, so again, I, I went with like a darker red, kind of mute, uh, almost a rust red. Um, I call it maybe a russet. So the underlayment is brown and white, and then the red is, you know, I get the, the, the shading is from the, the brown and the white, and obviously the red is from the top color of red. The gold was just straight, that um, metal, uh, uh, Vallejo metal color is gold. The, my only crit really on this kit would be the clear parts. Um, they, when I first got them, they felt a little tacky, like the resin hadn't fully cured. Um, but they do have some, they're not, they're not brittle, so they're, they're flexible. Um, I didn't break any of them, which is a good thing. There are some bubbles in here that are just, you just can't do anything about because they're in the resin and being clear resin, there's just nothing you can do about that. Um, so I did my, and clean, and clean up, clean up on this piece took quite a bit longer than I anticipated. There was a pretty good mold line on both sides of the torso, which took me quite a bit of sanding, priming and resanding to do. And then cleaning up the clear resin took quite a while. Um, so I probably have a day and a half in cleanup, um, two days in painting. So, you know, overall four days, four full days, you know, 50 hours, 60 hours to get this guy done. So, um, and then if, you, if you've ever seen the ZNR pre-painted version, their base is really, really dark. Um, and then they do a really bright, really bright yellow for like the glow effect so what i did if i did a live broadcast um yesterday i think it was um of how i painted the base so it's, it's like a two or three hour video of how i painted the base minus the glow effect so i kept the i basically re re reproduced the look of concrete got it all done and then I added some actual uh, Vallejo mud effects on the ends here to add like a mud look to it or different layers of, of soil. Um, I added some epoxy here to, to represent water coming out of the pipe. Um, the pipe's weathered and rusted. And then after I did all the painting of the base and everything, I went in with transparent white. And then I over diluted some yellow and orange and just did a a light glow effect. I didn't do it really bright because I wanted all that work that I did on the concrete to show through. So I wanted you to still see the concrete. And the very last thing on the base is I went back with some just straight white and just added a few highlights on the rocks and stuff. Uh, skin tones, I think are, again, I'm getting better at skin tones with each piece. I think these look pretty good and natural. Um, again, I suck at painting eyes, so I use decals. You know, call me a cheater. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but, um, I guess I just need to pick some pieces and practice painting eyes, but when you have decals, you know, I use the tools that are, are given to me. So I rather do decals and then, you know, work on other things and try to spend hours painting eyes. The first time I tried to paint eyes, I spent eight hours and I got one eye done and it looked like ass. So um, again, a lot of guys call me a cheat for using decals, but Hey, you know what? They're there. I'm going to use them. Then they look way better than me trying to paint an eye. So um, I'd rather be, rather be called a cheater or whatever on the eyes and deliver something my client's going to like rather than, you know, give them googly eyes or something that looks really stupid. So um, what else? And now for the, for the lightning effects, um, I started out with, I, first, after I cleaned everything up, I started out with like several heavy coats of my automotive clear to make them look like glass. And then I sprayed them all with clear yellow. And then I went in and did some shading with clear orange. And the very last step was I just kind of painted the tips with some semi-transparent white. Um, hopefully that looks like lightning. Um, I guess it does, or fire. Um, 
That's really about it. Yeah, I, I'm, I really like the way it looks. Some, someone had mentioned that the forearm should be red, but my client asked for gold on the glove, so I did that. Um, but really cool piece. I mean, uh, a lot of people have been asking me, where can I get one? You can't, it's out of production. As far as I know, this is the last kit produced. Um, um, as far as I know, Abdul was telling me that the molds were going bad, so this is like the last one. And this was purchased uh, like a year ago. So that's a quick little video kind of explaining my paint up on this piece. But um, I am gonna show a few photos, I guess, again, quote unquote, unedited or unprocessed, uh, because people keep asking me for unedited photos. I don't edit my photos, I process them. You have to. Um, like you wouldn't have a roll of film and just hand someone a roll of films like here, here are your pictures. Um, you have to have that film processed to make the picture. Same thing with digital. You have a raw file, that raw file is your film. You have to process it to get a photo that you like or that represent what you're trying to show. So um, um, I don't edit, I process. It's a big difference. Um, editing would be like, okay, um, I don't like the color of his eyes. I'm gonna go in there and change them to brown. Or, oh, the logo looks jacked up. I'm gonna go Photoshop all the logo and clean everything up. Or, oh, I really screwed up the paint here. I'm gonna go Photoshop my mistakes out. I don't do that. Um, because that's cheating, <laughs> or that's false representation of what the piece is. Uh, but I do process the photos to represent what it looks like in person. So there's a, they asked for a short video. Here's an 11 minute video, but there's a, a quickie on, on the paint up of this piece. So um, there you go. As always, thanks for watching. It's Matt Rosick. Catch you guys next time.